Let's start today's show with a quick word from FanDuel. Say goodbye to Busted Brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the NCAA tournament, which officially begins today just after noon, whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed. It's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. And right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if their first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, <clears throat> money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash UCSS and bet on college hoops until they cut the nets down. And let's give a shout-out to So Life for a big parlay win on the Cavs heat game last night. So Live turned $10 nice. into nearly $1,200 Ooh. on this same game parlay. A bunch of over-under alternate spreads on points, rebounds, three-pointers made. So shout-out to So Live for that parlay win. If you have a winning ticket, make sure you send it in to us on Twitter, and we will feature it on the show in the coming days. By the way, real quick, I was looking a little further at that draft with Mingo. The third round that year was where it's at. Here's some of the guys that went in the third round real quick. First pick of the third round, Travis Kelsey. Oh, damn. <laughs> 62 players went before Travis Kelsey. 69, Honey Badger. Didn't he drop because of like drugs or something? Marijuana Yo, I'm, I'm about to be like triggered. Because I think we took like Chris Crocker. Like Browns it. took Leon McFadden. Leon McFadden. One pick, one pick before, before him. Yeah. Before Mc, Matt Matthew. There you go, damn sense. Uh, Teron Armstead, great tackle for the Saints, went 75. Keenan Allen went 76. Wow. That's a shame. <laughs> wow. I mean, there's some, there were some really good players. That's a in the lot third of round. third round gyms. Yep. Well, somebody that wasn't drafted that year, but uh, has just been signed by the Browns. That's Deontay Foreman, guys. Deontay Foreman's like six foot two thirty. He is big <laughs> for a running back. Uh, first of all, before we get into what it means for the team, Earl, what do you think about the signing? I like the signing. I think you get a veteran running back that uh, fits that you know short yardage goal line mode. Dude ran for like 425 yards last year. Um, he got 17 career total touchdowns. I think he's somebody that will step in and immediately compete to be the Browns' number two running back and somebody that can step in and be your lead back in the event that Nick Chubb is not healthy and ready to go at the start of the year. Anywhere he's been throughout his career, he's been highly productive when given the opportunity. Um, he was paired with Deuce Staley in Carolina, had some success there. So Two years ago. Uh, two years ago. The only thing, uh, he did suffer an Achilles injury. I know me and Mike talked about this maybe, I think, two or three seasons ago. But outside of that, he doesn't have many carries on him, less than 600 career carries. So I really, really like this. Tyvis? When I seen that signing right there, you know what it told me? Well, save the what told you. I like I like Dante, Deont Dante. <laughs> <laughs> I like Deonte Foreman. Yeah. I think he's a very physical back, uh, yeah. great short yardage goal line situation guy. Yeah. He needs to be the na na main guy. He's had games and moments where he's looked really good. Yeah. Um, and I think that he could be very productive. Like I said, down on the goal line. But if this offense is going more to a passing thing, I don't know if that's necessarily you want him in as your feature back. No, uh, he is not a pass catcher right. at all. He is a Nick, Chai, Nick, Nick, Chai, Nick Chubb type of back. Yes. Um, and he's a good back. He's a real solid back. I, actually, last year was really his worst year. It was a weird season for him because er, they signed him as a free agent and then they drafted Rashawn Johnson and they already had um, Herbert. Herbert, Khalil yes, Herbert. Khalil Herbert. And early in the year, he was a, a healthy scratch and then – Johnson and Herbert both got banged up. In the middle of the year, he played, did a decent job. And then by the end of the year, he was a healthy scratch again. You're right, he hasn't played a ton. He had his best year with Deuce Staley in Carolina yep. two years ago. I think he had almost 1,000 yards that year, he even though he didn't have a ton if, of carries. you picked him up for fantasy that year, you were yeah. a happy person. he had a bunch of good games. Yeah. Uh, I was reading something from my guy T.A. about the analytics on him are very positive. He's hard to... Bring down with the first tackle, a la Nick Chubb. Now, nobody's going to confuse him for Nick Chubb. He's nowhere no. near as talented, but he's the same mold, same style of running back as Nick Chubb. Now, you started to say, Tyvis, that told. it told you something. Did it tell you something about Nick Chubb, I assume? No. Well, that's not what you're going to say? No. Okay. It told me that Kareem Hunt is done. Oh, well, yeah. Uh, didn't, didn't you assume that already or no? Well, I have made a bet right, right on <laughs> live, <laughs> on, live on this yeah. set. I, I shook Jay Crawford's hand yeah. right there and told him that Nick, or that Kareem Hunt is done. Yeah, so he should have known that. I want to know that. I want to yeah. collect my winnings. What was the what bet? Is, what was the bet? I don't remember. A oh. stake? What it is? I, you know what? 
I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't <laughs> matter. You, you, it doesn't you matter. Won. I won. I won. That's <laughs> it. It doesn't even matter, matter what we met. But, um, yeah, for the Nick Chubb thing, obviously they're a little worried that maybe he's not going to be available right at the beginning of the season. And that's very hard. I mean, listen, you tore both things in your leg. Yeah, it's going to take a while. You, Adrian Peterson, everybody likes to compare him to Adrian Peterson. Adrian Peterson is – an outlier for this situation. Not a lot of did people. Did he tear both ligaments? I don't think he did. I, don't I think thought he it was did. just his ACL. Yeah, but even even more reason. Yeah, he's a freak. But exactly. I think so, Nick Chubb's a freak also. But, I agree. Yeah. But it's like, it's just something. He's just more freaky. Yeah. <laughs> right. right. He's yeah. a super freak. <laughs> yeah. Super freak. Exactly. <laughs> Go ahead. So, Nick Chubb might not be available for the beginning of the season, and you still need a guy to punch it in when you get in those short yardage goal line situations, and obviously he can do that. Um, and you need a, you just need another change of pace. You know, you can't just continue to go with the speed backs all the time, man. You need somebody that can wear defenses down, and he can do that. And – I know Pierre Strong isn't the answer because I watched him try to go for it on the goal line. You know, he got stoned in the game mm. right on the one. He tried to punch it in. They boom, stoned him. So you definitely need that guy since Kareem Hunt ain't on the roster no more. Yeah, Pierre Strong is done. He's uh, At this point, he's their fifth running back. Yeah. Fifth? <laughs> yeah. Hold one, on. Two, three, four. Nick. <laughs> Nick. Jerome. Hines. Uh, and Foreman. I forget about Hines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Earl, when you heard the news of Deontay Foreman, was there a part of you that was started to worry about Nick Chubb or no? Uh, I definitely looked at it like, okay, maybe the Browns have some concerns, and instead of trying to get ready, they make sure they are ready. Like, you know, we talked last year a lot about having contingency plans, and I think Andrew Berry is doing his due diligence across the board to make sure I got enough players at X, Y, and Z positions just in case. Um, this way, you don't even have to rush Nick Chubb back, right? I think that the pairing of Jerome Ford and Deontay Foreman is much better in production or will be much better in production than Hunt and Ford was last year. So I think that this gives you an opportunity to kind of let, let you just bring Nick Chubb along at its proper pace or whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think this is cool. It definitely ended the, uh, the end of Kareem. And Hunt, when you so. say yeah. you, more production, because a lot of people are re- <clears throat> listening to that and say, well, you had all those, touch- I, had all those right. touchdowns. Yeah. I think you mean like over the course over of the field. Over the course, right, right, over, right, like, right. Not, not like we, we, know, positive yards. we know all Kareem Hunt did was score touchdowns <laughs> exactly. every time he got the opportunity, but just over the yeah. course of the field. Um, 109 carries, 425 yards. I think Jerome Ford had like 210 carries for like 813 yards. So the production yards per carry was 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 pretty similar. Yeah. But like we all know Kareem Hunt's yards per carry and the yards that he put forth, like it wasn't all that. So I just think this gives you another uh, productive running back that you compare with Jerome Ford until Nick Chubb is healthy. And then it gives you a solid change of pace back that mm-hmm. complements Nick Chubb running style when he is healthy. Uh, the first thing I guess I thought about this is a running back for December and January. This is a good running back to have for December and January. Yeah, it'll be interesting to – I mean, the first thing I thought of – obviously, I like the move because he's a good player. Yeah. But then the first thing I was like, oh, they're, they they got to be concerned. Like, we haven't heard anything about Nick Chubb. Mm-mm. For weeks before free agency, we were having so many conversations on this show about, our, you know, is there a chance he'd get cut? I think we, we all assumed he wouldn't. But, like, is there a chance? Because his cap number's big. We were talking about restructuring, new contract. There's been Enough. nothing on Nick Chubb. It's been dead silence. Now, maybe no news is good news, but but I think there's a part, I'll speak from just for myself, I just assumed that Nick Chubb would be fine at the beginning of the season because he's Nick Chubb. I think he's like a Greek god. Yeah. He's going to be fine. Yeah. But he's still a human, yeah. and he had two ligaments torn. Yeah. Like, that is a pretty serious injury. He had to have two surgeries. And it happened during the season. It wasn't like it happened in training camps where it'd be a year. Yeah. So it, the season will have already started by the time it's a year. So it makes sense at the very least to sign a guy who would who is essentially a poor man's Nick Chubb to replace him to some degree for part of the season. And, you know, you talk about rushing him. Now, Nick Chubb, you, I mean, we don't know. I don't know him personally. I've interviewed him a couple of times. But everything I know about Nick Chubb tells me he's going to want to play as soon as he can. Yeah. And he's not going to, you know, like, he's going to probably even, maybe even before he should. 
Uh, I don't, no, I, I don't, don't think, think so? no, I don't think they would. They first Some, of all, but don't players sometimes think they're ready before maybe they yeah, are. Yeah, Deshaun yeah. did that last year, and, and well, you there see you what go. So I think that they will protect him from himself that's in right. that situation, and I think that's why this move is for that. Especially yeah. if former goes out there and he's being productive. Right. I think for Chubb, the thing that worries me the most is that it's going to take a while to get back because you got to trust your knee. You got to trust that it's there. And mm-hmm. that's hard to do. Like, after after being yeah. hurt and can't do anything, and now you think you're just going to pick right back up mm-hmm. and go back to who you were. Did you ever tear up your knee? No. Okay, I didn't. Good. Thank, thank <laughs> God. Yeah. Thank you. I've never had any major knee I'm injuries. Unlike Gene Bush, who's had 87 t- injuries. Yeah, but I've talked to a bunch of people, and they always said that it was always trusting that it was right again. Like, that's the thing. That's it's the, the mental hurt. Exactly. Right? Yeah, I was, and I think that's where maybe Nick Chubb might have a little bit of that. I was going to ask about that, because you could rehab all day long and you can mm-hmm. go through all the drills and all the camps, but until you actually get out there in a real game. Yeah, you try to hit your move. And you hit your move or get hit by somebody that, that's, that's you know, you know those hits that we look like look at a TV like, ooh, that was a tough one. Yeah. And until you see him pop right back up. Exactly. That's when I think everybody would take a collective deep breath. And on top of yeah. that, you never know. He could be scarred. Somebody, right. one of them DBs come run, he might yeah. curl up yeah. now. Like, it... it, it Booby Miles thought he was ready to play. Yeah. He That's, got out there. And he you want to win? To put Booby in. I'm about, to, I'm about to spin. By the way, the movie, way better than way the TV better. show. That movie was great. I read the book, by the way. I read the book first, then I saw the movie. Really? It's a good book. You're such a great reader. I'm not. A, I'm an okay reader. But you read I, a lot. That was a really good you book. You read a lot. I do, but mostly only at night. Only at night. Before That's one of my favorite movies, though. Great movie. Friday, Friday Night, night Lights. Great movie. Great, great, great movie. Any Given Sunday is my uh, favorite football movie. Oh. I thought it was overrated. What? That speech at the end is great. I I'll don't care that. about no speech. I don't know. I thought all the <laughs> uniforms and the fields. I so like. Cheesy. I think for me, it was the action cameras. Like that was cool. Like I'll it was like that. you literally was there. Like so, Ooh. you wasn't dancing like Willie Beeman. You wasn't doing uh, your own music. I, I, <laughs> I, I can see Bull and I you who know, am I? Yeah, yeah. Willie uh, Beeman. All right, I was doing the Willie Beeman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But. <laughs> But I don't know. My favorite football movie of all time is Remember the Titans. Mine too. That's what yeah. everybody says. Mine too. You will be perfect yeah. in every aspect it's a good, of the It's day. a great movie, and it deserves all the yeah. awards and accolades, but I just like the action pack. Yeah. Like, Even though I was I was reading an article, because whenever a movie is based on a real thing, yeah. like Remember the Titans, I always like to read like how true was the movie. Yeah. And apparently, the, uh, Herman Boone, who's the character Denzel Washington played, right. was a big time asshole like really he was awful to all the kids like, <laughs> uh, I, uh, <laughs> like wow. everybody hated him <laughs> say black or white everybody yeah, 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 around. <laughs> well, they definitely changed that for but, the movie. but yeah 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 like yeah, nobody hates denzel washington well, no, even deep. when he's a bad guy like it's denzel washington i can't <laughs> hate him uh go ahead mike so there was some scuttlebutt on twitter last night after Ooh, the scuttlebutt. you like that yeah it's a new word that this may Put Jerome Ford's roster spot in jeopardy. Do you guys agree with that? That's ridiculous. That's the dumbest theory. thing I ever heard. <laughs> that Whoever put that out there is an idiot. Who put that out there? There was a lot of people talking about That's it. That's ridiculous. Your <laughs> lead back from last year, you go, it's going to put him in jeopardy? That doesn't even make sense. Like, so no. you think they carry four running backs? No, well, they carry three and put one on practice squad. Well, Which if they was to cut Pierre Strong, I don't think people would pick him up. No, no, forget Pierre Strong. When Nick... Ch- Let's say Nick you Chubb. Can't forget about Hines. So you Nick Chubb could start the season on pup, right? Okay. Right. If he starts on the pup list, he misses the first four games. Let's say he's. Re- let's say all three of those guys are healthy: Hines, Ford, and Devontae uh, Foreman. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Chubb comes back. Well, Hines is H- the third back. Would be Hines. Yes. and he's your returner. Right. So. Now, now I, special I think teams it, is what's going to keep him around. I actually believe in that case they would keep. They might keep four running backs. Because one he, is your returner. It's not like he's – I mean, he's going to come in every now yeah. and again, but for the most well, part, they, br- they brought him to be the returner. But he's a really good pass yeah, catcher. I, I, I would use him in that role. Now, they like Ford in that role too. Exactly. He's supposed to be the best. But ca- Hines is uh, – he's always been a really – now, he didn't play last year, so I don't know what I mean, it's a be. nice change of pace. But there's no sure. way they're cutting Jerome Ford. That, are we all that's ridiculous. That? That's, yeah, that's, that's ridiculous. They and like worst, him. Worst case scenario, he, can be, he was a kickoff returner. And by the way <laughs> – Listen, <laughs> I was critical of the Browns' running game last year, but he wasn't terrible. No. It wasn't like he was he, awful. He, he actually was okay. He, he was hot and cold. He got better as the year went on. His vision just wasn't that great, but he had moments where he started to see things and he ran just a tad bit harder, yeah. especially towards the end of the year. He got a lot better. 
they would cut Hines or Foreman before they cut Ford. I agree. Right? I that, mean, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. He's a, first healthy, of all, and he's the cheapest. If, so Nick the rookie Chubb's deal. Healthy, if Nick Chubb's healthy, Deontay Foreman's not playing. Yes. not He's out. Yes. You know, so if anything, they cut him or like trade him for a seventh round pick or something. Yeah, that was ridiculous. But they're, they're not getting rid of Ford because Ford. Foreman is the, is the same skill set as Chubb, just not as good. You wouldn't cut Ford because Ford can take care of, like, three things. He could be your right. pass catching back, he can be your returner, and he could be your starting back. Why yeah, would you get rid of a guy that can do three different things? Right. And and Hines, I, I like what he can bring. Yeah. But I don't even know if he's 100% certain to make the team. Like, he didn't play last year. He's not young. Well, I'll tell you what, they, they re-signed Proche again. So, so let me ask you both a question. Yeah, yeah. So, if, if Chubb starts the season on the pup list, yeah. You think Florida beat out Foreman for the running back one position? I yes. Think be, I think they're one A one B. I think he's. I think he Jerome Ford be the starting back. I maybe technically, but I think they'll split. Yeah, carries. split carries. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Jerome Ford, when when they come out and they break the huddle for the first one, Jerome Ford will be the starting back. The truth is, we've been very lucky in Cleveland with Nick Chubb because mo. Well, it doesn't even have to be lucky. Most teams in the NFL don't have a clear number one back, or That's true. or don't have <laughs> one guy getting 15, 20 carries. Most teams have a split backfield. Maybe it's 60-40, mm-hmm. but there are a lot of teams that are 60-40 or 50-50 or something like that. Maybe. It's not, and that's what the Browns would be. Maybe they're looking at it like, uh, like how Philadelphia do. Philadelphia got like four running backs that they rotate throughout the game. Right. I mean, well, they had, now, well, it'll probably change with Barkley there, I would think. But, yeah, well, yeah. Well, you never know. Yeah. They, I mean, they, they seem to love what's-his-name. Swift. They, no, no, no. Well, Swift's Gainwell. gone. Gainwell, Gainwell right? Yeah, yeah. Gainwell. They, they like yeah. using him. He plays a little bit. They throw Boston Scott in there every once yeah, in a while. Yeah, they, they had like three or four guys. So. Yeah, but I, I would think that if Chubb can't start the season, and even if Chubb is healthy, even let's say he's active for week one, they're still not going to give him a full no. load of, of carries Ooh-hoo. week one. So I think if Nick Chubb is on the pup list, that I agree with you. I think Ford technically is the starter. But I think Deontay Foreman probably gets 12 carries and and Ford gets 10 or 12 and then a few catches. Well, I think if you look at the season last year, although they had Kareem Hunt, it still was – he he just – he ne- he wasn't the same Kareem Hunt. Like Kareem no. Hunt runs the ball. He's he's fearless. He runs through a brick wall, but it wasn't effective. No, like that. No. Like Foreman actually can be effective in yardage. Oh, That's he'll what, get more touches yeah. than jump than uh, than Hunt got. Exactly. Yeah, because it seemed it just seemed like when Jason would say he's on three wheels. Like yeah. I understood what he was saying. Right, he was right. It's like he didn't have that burst anymore. Yeah, like he, right. And that's it is what it is. But I think Foreman still can do that. And now you got a nice one-two, you know, combo where you got a guy with speed, but you got a physical guy that can also be productive in the run game as well. Right. I wonder if, uh, especially before Chubb comes back, if he's not ready for week one, if they would even have Foreman and, and um, Ford in the in the backfield at the same time. No. Yeah, they've never. They, not, and they, really if they didn't it. do it with Kareem <laughs> and, and Nick Chubb two years ago, then they're not going to ever do it. I don't know. You never know. I mean, Ken Dorsey is in here with Kevin That's Stefanski true. now. New, new, you know, that might a new be person in, the, person in the mix. Did they do it in? Did they do it in Buffalo? I have to go back. He and liked check, more check two tight end tape. sets than two back sets. In What's that? Dorsey's a bigger fan of two tight end sets. Oh well, him and Kevin ends. is best friends. Then. Oh, well, yeah. they better get a better psych, a better second tight end then. Jordan Aikens. Yeah. Trade everything for Brock Bowers. <laughs> Let me ask you guys one more question. Yeah. Earl, I'll start with you. You might have to get in the top ten to get him. <laughs> you we have talked will. about the Browns at pick 54 now because of the talent up and down across the <clears> roster. <throat> being able to pick best position available or best player available at <coughs> 54. Now that they have four backs on the roster, potentially five with Pierre Strong, but we assume he's gone. Do you think there's any chance they still look at running back with one of their first two picks? Or no, absolutely, <clears throat> absolutely not. I think from the start of free agency into now – And not just with the Cleveland Browns. I think what we have really noticed was general managers looked at the running back class that's coming out this year and said, this is a very weak class. I think I've read articles. I've seen mock drafts to where the first running back didn't go into the third round. Mm. And so I think the emphasis on free agent running backs this year, that's probably why it seemed like it was an elevated priority. And it's probably why they got two, three million dollars annually more than they probably would have in the past. Mm not just because of the salary cap going up. Mm-hmm. And so, like, I don't think that the Browns is going to be looking at a running back at all. You know, I think that that's, that, that ship is sailed. The Browns, I mean, 
it was a good year to be a free agent running. First of all, it was yeah, great. It was. <laughs> it was a great running back class in free agency, yeah, like one of the best we've seen. Yeah. And as you said, the consensus from the draft expert seems to be that this is not a good running back group. I wouldn't say there's no chance they draft a running back. I think it's unlikely. I don't think they're just going to. I don't think they're going into the draft saying, "Well, we'd never draft a running back in that spot." Right. It just doesn't seem like there's a running back worth drafting in that spot necessarily. I mean, I agree with that. I, I just feel like at every draft you always take a running back, like whether it's six round, seven round, or undrafted. Yeah. It but you'd like, be surprised if they took one in the second round. Oh yeah. yeah, no. If it was at the second round pick, yeah. I'd be, I'd be shocked. That's not a position that you need right now. Like, don't get me wrong, even if Nick Chubb doesn't come back as Nick Chubb, running backs, they say come a dime a dozen. So mm. as long as you, I think you got the ones on your roster currently that fits what you're trying to do offensively anyways, yeah. as far as being more of a pass catching back, I think you got – and Jerome Ford showed you that he can at least be effective between the tackles. So I think you got a guy who can be at least serviceable – until you can land a guy later on. So at, at 54, no way they draft a running back. So what positions uh, do we would we be shocked if they drafted at 54? Obviously quarterback. Yes. Running back, I think we're all in agreement. Any other position? That we would be, be absolutely shocked at? I'd be, sho- I'd be surprised if they drafted a corner at 54. No, you guys don't agree? I think I'd be more nah. If they draft a corner, if they draft at a corner, then I need to see later that Greg Newsom or somebody traded. Yeah. or Martin so Emerson got traded. Yeah. No, if, don't say if, Martin Emerson. Man. Don't if so, that. if they draft a corner <laughs> at fifty four, yeah, what did them do later? Know, it, it better be a notification right after that says somebody got yeah. traded. <laughs> so then, uh, obviously, I would not be surprised by an offensive lineman. I know it doesn't seem like an obvious need. I wouldn't be but surprised. With, two, with, with older guys in the middle of that you line. You would be? You said you would be? I would not be. Oh, no. If, they if put, it was a left tackle, I wouldn't be shocked. Right. And there's supposedly there's a lot of good offensive linemen in this Man, draft. if they went tackle or guard with their first pick, I wouldn't be mad at all because I, I, you, you know, got aging players that make a lot right. of money at those positions. Right. So. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised by wide receiver, even with the addition no, of No, because Judy. two of yours is still going to be, be free, free agents. agents. Yeah, and, right. and you don't know what you got with uh, with Tillman and Bell. David Bell. So. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. What about tight end? Would you be surprised if they went tight end? That it might be a need if they run in two tight end sets. I feel like that's a little early to take a tight end. Probably. Cause but if it's like a... Are there any highly thought of tight ends besides Bowers in this draft? that I, 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 mean, I, I wasn't It's a decent it. class. Decent? Decently regarded. Not like last year where they had Kincaid <coughs> and... Laporta. Laporta and the guy from Michael Meyer or Mayer yeah, from well, he didn't Las do Vegas. Anything. Well, there was also there was a fourth guy. There were like four. Green Bay, the dude in Green Bay. Green Bay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Luke Musgrave. Musgrave, right. Um, yeah. And so decent. it's not that highly regarded, but there's a couple guys in the second, third round. Uh, Cade Stover out of Ohio State's in that conversation. Tyler Bucks. There's a guy from Kansas State, Sinat, or Sin- Sinet. Yeah. I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce his last name. Defensive but, line is interesting <clears throat> because. Bowers is the top guy. And then <coughs> the You've got nine guys that I look at as locks for the roster. And yet, <laughs> most of them are or m- not most, well, yeah, most, are older guys on short contracts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, in the end, I can't be shocked because you could keep 10 defensive linemen. Uh, you could. Yeah. But, uh, you are, but you always look into – you got to find a way because your quarterback is going to take the majority of the money now when, now that he's taking a big hit. Yeah. So, now you got to find impactful players on rookie deals. Because you, you can't keep affording to keep paying these big contracts. You take right. care of the main three or four guys that you need, right. but now you need guys that can be impactful that's on rookie deals. You can't keep paying Zadarius this type of money. You can't, you know, you know when it's time for G. New or Martin Emerson, maybe you can't afford to pay all this money. So that's why I think that it's always okay if they find a defensive end that they like or a defensive tackle that they like yeah. and they want to get them at, on a rookie deal that's serviceable, that can be productive, <clears throat> take that. Yeah. that. That's what you got to do. I, th- I think one of the things that I always wanted to see the Cleveland Browns do was kind of like mirror how the Pittsburgh Steelers build out their rosters. Um, and what I mean by that is, let's use Alex Wright, for example, right? Mm-hmm. When Alex Wright was drafted two years ago, this was the one pick that Kevin Stefanski, Andrew Barry said that everybody in the building was in agreement on. Mm-hmm. It felt like he was a young, raw talent, but he wasn't ready to play right away. And you sign a guy like Zadarius Smith, who's a veteran, who's had a lot of success, 
over 41 sacks uh, over the last four or five years to be an immediate productive player, but to also be a teacher mm -hmm. to this young dude. And so what I think the Browns are trying to do is trying to make sure that you get these guys that are young, talented guys that might not be ready to play yet, but you got some veterans that can produce for you immediately and be teachers and tutors to these, these younger players so that when it's time, these guys can step up right. and take over that take over that role. Yeah, I mean, the Steelers, as you say, and the Ravens have done that for years. Mm -hmm. In recent years, the Bengals have been able to do that. Yeah. Draft guys high and let them sit for a year because you don't need them right away. Yeah. We're used to so many years, the Browns forcing their – draft picks into the starting lineup even when they didn't really earn it because they just had nobody they else had no to choice. play. Right. And that's not the case now with this roster. Now, unfortunately, they haven't had a lot of high draft picks in recent years, so it's not like you're getting the premier talent to, you know. But this year you do have a second-round pick, and, you know, unlike last year where your first pick was in the third round. So, uh, hopefully, they can, whoever they – right, because, like, who – there's nobody that drafted that's going to start right away, or unlikely. I mean, I think we all agree with that. I think the Browns are past that. Like we're we're not. They're not. Yeah, I don't think they need a starter. No, I mean, where would you? You know, where would somebody start? Again, if I, I get, I think we talked about this a little bit. I think Mike mentioned this. He's probably right. If you got a receiver at 58 <clears throat> that killed it in camp, and like maybe he's the third wide receiver ahead of Elijah Moore. I think that's possible. <laughs> if he's that good, you you over the Elijah Moore trade? I've been over it for a while. Yeah, yeah. I ain't giving up. All right, well. man. I said that dude was gonna have like sixteen hundred all-purpose yards last year. Remember, I had him for like a thousand yards receiving. I, I had him for like another four hundred yards. Call out. I respect the self man. call out. I ain't, I ain't giving. We up. all get it wrong sometimes. I ain't, yeah. Nope, I ain't wrong. <laughs> what do you mean you ain't wrong? I was wrong last year, but. I ain't wrong so you think overall. he's got a good year this year? I think so. It's a thousand yards this year? No way. <laughs> Go no ahead and say yeah. Go wait, ahead. Further wait, down the depth. Wait, Go wait, ahead. wait a minute. Go ahead. What did he have last year? Six hundred. <laughs> he had six hundred yards last year. Six. What do you six have, Mike? Six thirty. Six yeah, six something. I ain't gonna say a thousand. That's <laughs> that's, that's absurd. He's gonna have six. Yeah. Can he duplicate what he did last year? I'm gonna say he's gonna have. <laughs> 759. Wow. 750, 759 and four touchdowns. <laughs> 759.5. You take it over. How, how many yards is Judy going to have? <coughs> Judy going to have 1,000 because they're going to force feed him. And how many yards is Amari Cooper going to have? Amari has to have 1,000. So it'll be the first time. So you're going to get about 3,000 yards from their top three receivers? That's a lot. What about Njoku? And a Joku. A Joku's going to take a dip. He's going to take a dip <laughs> this year. Uh -oh. he, I don't think he. What he had? 800 last year? 859. So, yeah. you, so you're he, saying. He's going to have like, he gonna have like 690. So like Jerry Judy touchdowns. and Amari Cooper is going to go Jarvis Landry, Odell Beckham. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I mean, Odell's 1,000 yard season was the most fraudulent 1,000 yard season <laughs> oh my in the history gosh. of football. <laughs> that was fraudulent. Go ahead. Just to give a bow tie in this conversation, the yeah. difference between picking at 54 and where the Browns picked last year at 74 was 20 picks. So just a few players selected in last year's draft between 54 and 74 to give you an idea of the kind of caliber the Browns may be able Tank to get. Tank Dell? Tank Dell was in that. Rasheed Rice of Kansas City was in that. Uh, Byron Young, the, he finished third in defensive rookie of the year voting for the Los Angeles Rams. And the bunch <laughs> of guys who didn't also do anything. So three hits, legit hits, mm. at least. In Imagine that if 20, the Browns had Tank Dell right now. Yeah. Man. So, one of you. Uh, I move pick, on to our next topic here. Or, 